Hello everyone, my name is Gabby Irons with Imaginar Florida and Clearview Geographic here today to talk to you guys about one of Florida's most precious ecosystems, wetlands. Let's jump right into it. So what exactly are wetlands? The Florida Department of Environmental Protection defines them as areas that are inundated or flooded by surface water or groundwater at a frequency and duration sufficient enough to support a prevalence of vegetation that is typically adapted for life in saturated soils. This basically means that a region must have wet soils or at least be covered by a shallow layer of water for part of the year. Some wetlands are always flooded, others are only for a short time. In this sense, wetlands can be viewed as transitional areas between dry uplands and aquatic systems such as lakes, rivers, or oceans. There are two main types of wetlands, saltwater wetlands and freshwater wetlands. Within those two categories are swamps and marshes. A swamp contains trees and shrubs, while a marsh is filled with grasses and soft-stemmed plants. Let's start with our saltwater wetlands. First up, salt marshes. Sometimes called tidal marshes, salt marshes are non-forested saltwater wetlands that occur along coasts in zones between high and low tide. Salt marshes are super important as habitats for fish and wildlife. The mixture of freshwater and saltwater makes an environment perfect for young animals. Salt marshes are mainly composed of rushes, sedges, and grasses. The intricate root system of this vegetation helps keep the soil anchored as the tides move in and out. Next up in the saltwater category, we have mangrove swamps. Mangroves are able to thrive in salty environments because they can obtain fresh water from salt water. Some give off excess salt through their leaves, while others can block the intake of salt from their roots. In Florida, there are about 500,000 acres of mangrove forests that exist. There are three species of mangroves you might see in Florida. The red mangrove is most common and is found right near the water. Because their roots stick out near the surface, they often look like they're standing or walking, earning them the nickname walking trees. The black mangrove usually occurs at slightly higher elevations compared to the red mangrove and is identified by its numerous finger-like roots called pneumatophores that protrude from the soil around the tree trunk. Next, the white mangrove usually occurs at the highest elevations and has no visible aerial root systems as they are usually below the water surface. Finally, we have buttonwood, which is considered an upland transitional species associated with mangrove communities. All of these plant species, though, play an important role in saltwater wetlands as their roots and branches provide home to many waterfowl. Like salt marshes, they also provide nurseries for a variety of marine life. Now, we're going to move closer inland to talk about freshwater wetlands. First, we'll look at the many different types of forested wetlands, or swamps, in Florida. Freshwater swamps absorb floodwaters and run off from the land around them. They are distinguished from marshes and bogs by the dominant presence of trees and shrubs. The most common type of swamp in Florida is called the cypress dome, or dome swamp. They are most common in central Florida. The reason for this name is because the ecosystem consists of smaller trees that grow on the shallower waters of the outer edge, while the taller trees grow in the deeper water of the interior, creating their characteristic dome shape. Swamps in Florida, whether dome swamp, basin swamp, strand swamp, or floodplain swamp, are typically dominated by bald cypress, pond cypress, swamp tupelo, and water tupelo trees. Spanish moss is often found on the stems and branches of canopy trees. The final type of wetlands we're going to talk about are freshwater marshes. This one is very important in Florida, since the Florida Everglades is the single largest marsh system in the United States. The water in this ecosystem can come from groundwater, streams, surface runoff, or precipitation. Freshwater marshes can resemble ponds, but they are covered with water plants and other kinds of vegetation. Marshes do not have trees, but you will often find graminoids, or plants that resemble grasses, that are adapted to live in saturated and changing conditions. You can also find plants such as the Carolina willow, St. John's wort, and buttonbush, which look like trees but are actually woody shrubs. Other plants, such as water lilies, duck potato, pickerel weed, and smartweed are important to freshwater marshes too. But why should you care about wetlands? Until recently, many people thought of wetlands as wastelands and drained them so that the land could be used for development. Now, we understand that wetlands play a crucial role in keeping our environment clean and healthy. First, wetlands help improve our water quality since they act as natural cleaning systems. When water enters the system, the plants help to purify and filter contaminants by trapping solids and absorbing them in their roots. Bacteria and other microorganisms also play a role in this process as they eat and digest organic wastes. Many local governments have begun to recognize this natural benefit and have built man-made wetlands designed to provide advanced treatment for reclaimed water from surrounding cities. As sea levels rise, wetlands are also very important to protect us from floods. 
They serve as natural barriers that can reduce damage from heavy rainfall or storm surges. Wetlands will also absorb water and then release it very slowly. Some also refill the aquifer below ground. Lastly, wetlands are extremely productive and support a large variety of animals, many of which cannot nest, breed, or live anywhere else. Many species of wading birds actually depend on Florida's wetlands. Saltwater wetlands help nearly two-thirds of our marine fish who rely on them for survival, especially as nursery areas. More importantly, wetlands are considered critical habitat for nearly one-third of the plants and animals included on the federal list of endangered species. Wetlands once covered over half of the land in Florida, but much of this land has been drained, dredged, or developed. Now, Florida has lost approximately 9.3 million acres of wetlands, or 46% of its total in the 1780s. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have something you'd like to learn about in a future video, please leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye!